In the last few days, SpaceX fans witnessed something unexpected. Booster 18 laying on the pad with torn metal, exposed structures, and clear signs of a violent internal failure. Images spread quickly across social media, and many people asked the same question, did SpaceX just break their newest Starship booster before it even launched? Or was this exactly the kind of test they needed to move forward? Welcome back to SpaceX Saga, where we break down the biggest news in the world of rockets, engineering, and everything Starship. And today's story is far more exciting than it looks at first glance, because behind the destruction of B-18 is a long list of very encouraging signs that the new V-3 design might be SpaceX's most promising leap yet. So, what really happened during the B-18 stress event? Which upgrades survived far better than anyone expected? And how does this incident actually push SpaceX closer to Flight 12 and beyond? Let's dive into it. When Booster 18, SpaceX's first full V3 prototype, was rolled out, expectations were sky high. Version 3 was advertised as the major upgrade. Stronger tanks, improved internal structure, new fuel systems, and most importantly, the ability to support Raptor 3, the next-generation rocket engine. So, when B-18's oxygen tank burst open during a ground stress event, many people thought V3 was a failure. But here's the truth. This was a fuel-free structural test designed to push the booster beyond its limits. SpaceX wanted to see what breaks first, and surprisingly, many of the most important upgrades survived almost perfectly. Let's start with the component that stunned engineers and fans alike, the massive V3 fuel transfer tube. Compared to V2, this tube is significantly thicker, nearly Falcon 9 scale, designed for faster engine restarts, built to handle higher pressures and violent maneuvers. During the B-18 event, where the liquid oxygen tank literally tore open, the transfer tube barely took damage, just a small puncture right at the blast zone while everything else around it was shredded. This is huge, because the transfer tube is one of the most critical parts of the booster. It carries propellant directly to all 33 engines, and it also acts like a central spine holding the entire internal structure together. The fact that it survived tells us V3's internal architecture is dramatically stronger than V2. A V2 tube would have been destroyed instantly. So the very part SpaceX upgraded the most proved its worth. Another surprising detail, even with a giant hole ripped into the LOX tank and visible deformation on the methane tank, Booster 18 remained fully upright. With that much damage, most prototypes would collapse under their own weight. But V3 stayed standing, solid enough for teams to inspect it safely. This tells us two things. One, the external frame of V3 is stronger than expected. Two, the internal tube really does act like a load-bearing backbone. This stability is critical for future missions, especially those involving rapid reusability, hot staging, precision landings, and eventual catch operations with the tower. If V3 can survive an internal tank rupture without falling, it can survive a lot. One of the most reassuring discoveries came from the forward section, the part that houses, hot staging, ring-upgraded grid fins, avionics stage separation systems. Even though the lower tank tore open, the top section was totally undamaged. This tells us that the upper V3 systems are insulated from lower section failures a key requirement for high-risk flight phases like hot staging, high-altitude control, descent stability, and booster catch attempts. Whether intentional or not, the design prevented damage from traveling upward. Another win for V3. One detail that didn't get enough attention. SpaceX intentionally performed this stress test before cryogenic loading. Had B-18 been filled with methane and liquid oxygen? We would have been looking at a fireball, not just a torn tank. This shows SpaceX is learning from past events and optimizing their test order. Catching problems early equals safer launches, faster prototype turnover, and fewer delays. V3 is promising, but it's not perfect yet. Here's what SpaceX must now improve. 1. Tank reinforcement. The oxygen and methane tanks clearly need stronger welds, thicker plates, 
better isolation against pressure surges. Extreme cold plus rapid pressurization equals dangerous combo. 2. Internal plumbing. The pipe networks inside Starship are like arteries. They must not crack or deform. Next prototypes will almost certainly add more bracing, improve weld quality, introduce redesigned valve layouts. 3. Raptor 3. Integration. B-18 failed before Raptor 3 engines were installed. Now B-19 will be the first to receive them. Raptor 3 is much more powerful but also simpler. This requires new mounting structures, improved thermal systems, redesigned manifolds. 4. Heat shield improvements on the ship. The ship side, not booster, must ensure. Tiles stay attached. Gaps don't widen. Heat loads distribute correctly. Version 3 flights will demand higher durability than any previous version. Right now, the ship is slightly ahead of the booster in development. Ship 39. S-39 is nearly finished and undergoing. Structural inspections, stress tests. Full cryo-testing at Massey. If all goes well, engines will be installed before the end of December, followed by a Raptor 3 static fire. Booster 19. B-19 is catching up. Stacking should finish mid to late December. Cryogenic testing expected by early January. Raptor 3 installation follows immediately afterward. If static fire happens by mid-January, Flight 12 becomes possible in late January or early February. The timeline is tight, but doable. Why B-18's failure actually helps. SpaceX. It's easy to see a broken booster and think, setback. But failures like this are data gold mines. They tell SpaceX what broke, how it broke, how to fix it, how to make future boosters unbreakable. This is exactly how Falcon 9 became the world's most reliable rocket, and we're watching the same process unfold with Starship V3. This is how progress looks. Messy, intense, forward-moving. SpaceX has already proven they can recover from massive challenges. Early V2 failures. Ship 36's dramatic breakup. Multiple launch anomalies. And each time, the next attempt succeeds. There's no reason V3 will be any different. The first successful V3 launch will mark the beginning of a new era. One where Starship becomes not just experimental, but reliable, repeatable, and capable of supporting real missions. So now the question is, do the upgrades we saw on Booster 18 give you confidence in V3? Tell me in the comments, yes or no. Because from where I'm standing, the path ahead looks exciting. Version 3 isn't just another prototype. It's the foundation for lunar missions, Mars missions, point-to-point -point Earth transport, deep space exploration, rapid reusability. The future is coming fast, and SpaceX is learning faster. This is SpaceX Saga, keeping you ahead of every major development in the Starship program. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss the next update. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep looking up, because the next giant leap is closer than you think.